गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू मॉड्यूल थ्री ऑफ सेल द फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू कवर अप द फॉलोइंग टाइप्स ऑफ सोल्यूशन विच विल बी हाइपोटोनिक सोल्यूशन हाइपोटोनिक सोल्यूशन एंड आइसोटोनिक सोल्यूशन वी आर ऑल्सो गोइंग टू कवर हाउ सेल्स बिहेव इन दीज सोल्यूशन दिस मॉड्यूल विल ऑल्सो कवर अ लिटल ऑफ the process of endocytosis which is of two types pinocytosis and phagocytosis so let's begin with the solution what is a solution a solution is basically a homogeneous or uniform mixture of a solute and a solvent as you can see in the picture the what is lesser in amount is called the solute what is more in amount is the solvent when they are mixed and stirred together it forms a uniform solution of solute and solvent now let's study some more about types of solutions there are basically three types of solutions depending upon their strength in comparison to cell we name them as isotonic hypotonic and hypotonic now as the name suggests iso means same tonic means strength similarly hyper means more tonic means strength hypo means less and tonic again means strength so isotonic solution has the same strength as that of the solution inside the cell similarly hypotonic solution will have more concentration or more strength in comparison to the solution or the medium present inside the cell and hypotonic solution will have lesser strength lesser concentrated it will be a lesser concentrated solution how can we prepare these solutions if i want to prepare an isotonic solution in comparison to a cell what i have to do is i have to take the same amount of solute let's say salt same amount of salt as much is present inside the cell i will dissolve it in the same amount of solvent and when i prepare it this solution will be an isotonic solution if i want to prepare a hypertonic solution i have to add more solute because i have to make a concentrated solution so what i'll do is in comparison to the salt present inside the cell i will add more salt and the solvent will be lesser in comparison to the i will add less amount of water or solvent and the solution thus prepared after stirring will be called a concentrated or hypertonic solution when i want to make a hypotonic solution in comparison to a cell i will take less amount of salt more amount of solvent and prepare the solution and this solution will be hypotonic with respect to the cell contents let's study these in detail one by one starting with hypotonic solution if the medium around the cell has less water that inside the cell then the cell will start to lose water by the process of osmosis now since the water is exiting the cell or is going out of the cell therefore this movement of water is called exosmosis now such a concentrated solution which causes exosmosis in the cell in a living cell is called hypertonic solution due to this movement of water outside of the cell the cell will start to reduce in volume and will look shrinked alternately we can also say that hypotonic solution is the one where the concentration of solutes is greater outside the cell than inside the cell as you can see in the picture higher concentration of water inside the cell so water moves out of the cell for example a cell put in water and what is the problem the cell starts to shrink and you can remember it as hyper means high in the particles moving on to hypotonic solution now in a hypotonic how do you define a hypotonic solution as we discussed earlier hypotonic solution is the one which has the in which the concentration of solutes is greater inside the cell than outside of it or we can say if the medium around the cell has higher water concentration simply it has more water than it has the solute than inside the cell then the cell will start to gain water 
now what is more outside water is more outside and water is lesser in comparison in the cell because of which through the plasma membrane the water will start to move now such a dilute solution is called hypotonic solution now though the water molecules pass across the plasma membrane on both sides but more water will enter the cell as the water is entering inside the cell so this inward movement of the water or the solvent will will be called as endosmosis this results in the swelling up of the cell and it also increases in volume as you can see in the picture it can be remembered as hypo that is high in h2o moving on to isotonic solution if the medium has exactly the same water concentration as the cell there will be no net movement of water please remember there will be no net movement of the water which also means the amount of water going inside the cell will be equal to the amount of water water moving in out of the cell so the net movement of the water becomes zero across the cell membrane so such a solution which causes this equal movement equal amount of exosmosis and endosmosis in a cell is called as a isotonic solution the amount of water going inside the cell is same as the amount of water going out of the cells hence no net movement so as a result of this the cell will remain the same size so alternately we can say an isotonic solution is the one where the concentration of solute outside the cell is equal to the concentration of solute inside the cell as you can see in the picture there is no change in the cell the volume doesn't change the cell remains the same example is blood let's discuss how different cells behave in this solutions as we already know isotonic solution has the same concentration of solutes inside and outside the cell because of which water molecules move equally in both directions so as you can see the cell the animal cell the first picture remains the same same is the case with plant cell below in case of hypotonic solution the solution has higher solute concentration than the cell so the net movement of water molecules out of the cell causes the shell cell to shrink as you can see this red blood cells cell has shrunk so in case of similar in case of plant cell in which the cytoplasmic content or the contents inside the cell inside the cell wall has shrunken away from the cell wall this condition is called plasmolysis in case of hypotonic solution the solution has a low concentration of solute than inside the cell and the net movement of the water uh, molecules into the cell causes the cell to swell as you can compare the size of the first picture first red blood cell with that of this one the third one you can see it has it is it appears swollen or it has increased in volume similarly in case of plant cell you can see the original uh, picture of the cell in case of isotonic solution and in comparison to that the cell is starting to swell up or become more turgid let's do a quick comparison between the three so in hypotonic solution the solution outside the cell has low solute concentration than the fluid inside the cell in case of hypotonic solution the cell will undergo endosmosis which will cause the cell to swell or becomes enlarged the cell may even burst in some cases in case of hypotonic solution the solution outside the cell has higher con solute concentration than the fluid inside the cell in this case the pot cell will lose water by exosmosis as a result the cell will shrink and will lose its shape eventually the die in case of isotonic solution the solution has same solute concentration as inside the cell so there will be no net movement or there will be equal amount of exosmosis and endosmosis and the cell will remain the same now let's see how these cells look under a microscope in the first picture what you see is the cell of an algae called elodia in tap water please note 
the central big vacuole in the cell around which the organelles are located and you can see the organelles are located against the cell wall. Now when these cells are placed in 10% of salt solution which is NaCl, what is happening to the cell in the next picture is plasmolysis. You can see the contents of the cell are shrinking away from the cell wall due to exosmosis because the solution, the 10% NaCl solution is a hypertonic solution for this cell and it is causing exosmosis, losing of water by this vacuole which was taking most of the space inside the cell. It is losing water and that is why the contents of the cell are shrinking. You can see the vacuole shrinking in several cells here. Now what is plasmolysis? Plasmolysis is the process in which cell loses water in a hypertonic solution because of which the cell becomes flaccid. You can see the cell shrinks and the shrunken cell is called a flaccid cell. The reverse process called deplasmolysis, which is also called a cytolysis happens when we put a cell in a hypotonic solution. So the last picture or the third picture shows the cells in hypotonic solution. What happens here? It results in lower ex external osmotic pressure and because of which more for water flows inside the cell. Because where is more water? Water is more outside the cell. So water is started to move in because of which the cells are starting to swell up. As you can see in the outline picture, the third picture, the, the boundaries look blurred because the cell has swollen up or has increased in the volume. Such a cell which has swollen up is called a turgid cell. Let us now compare endosmosis with exosmosis. In terms of movement of solvent, in case of endosmosis, movement of solvent happens into the cell, while in case of exosmosis, it is out of the cell. Solute concentration is high inside the cell in case of endosmosis while solvent concentration is high outside the cell in case of endosmosis. In case of exosmosis the solute concentration is high outside the cell while solvent is high inside the cell. This causes a higher water potential outside the cell in case of endosmosis causes a higher water potential inside the cell in case of exosmosis. What does it result in? The effects on the cell is that the in case of endosmosis, the water is moving in, so cell, cell swells up, becomes turgid, may eventually burst. And in case of exosmosis, the cell dehydrates, it plasmolyzes, and the animal cells may appear to have shrunken. Moving on to the next process of movement of substances in the cell called endocytosis. Now endocytosis is the process of capturing a substance or a particle from outside the cell by simply engulfing it within the cell membrane. What happens is that the membrane folds over the substance, you can see in the picture, folds over the substance and it becomes completely enclosed in the membrane. At this point, a membrane-bound sac or a pouch-like structure is formed and it's pinched off and moves the substance in. As you can see in the picture, in, it is of two types, penocytosis, which involves taking in fluids and solutes. And you, the, what the bluish balls inside is called the vesicle. In case of phagocytosis, it is also taking in of materials, but only it takes larger substances like bacteria or simply engulfs them entirely. Endocytosis is of two types, phagocytosis, which is also called as cellular eating because it, it takes in larger particles inside from the extracellular fluid. Now, when the large size dissolved materials enter the cell, the plasma membrane engulfs the solid material forming a phagocytic vesicle or sac or pouch. In the picture, it appears like a bubble inside the cell. Penocytosis, on the other hand, is also called as cellular drinking. It occurs when the plasma membrane folds inward to form a channel, allowing the extracellular fluid, as you can see in the first picture, the bluish fluid is the extracellular fluid, to enter the cell. 
when the channel is closed the liquid is encircled within a pinocytic vesicle again it appears like a bluish bubble moving on to the real pictures showing pinocytosis and phagocytosis the first picture shows the pinocytosis in the membrane of capillaries what you see in the picture is a membrane of capillaries and the highlighted area inside the yellow box here shows the formation of those vesicles as you have seen in the previous picture pinocytosis you can see the comparison now the vesicles are being formed while some of the pink bubbles inside are already formed pinocytic vesicles what you see in the next picture here is a process of phagocytosis by a WBC. This is a real picture of the WBC. It is engulfing the bacteria. I hope you remember that WBCs do not have a fixed shape. With this, we move to a little task for you to learn and remember. You have to learn the definitions given on this page here. And this brings us to the end of module 3. Happy learning!